Winston. I've got some good news. Angel's at a convent near Winston-Salem, North Carolina. How is she? Shaky, but with any luck, I think she'll come back and testify. Well, don't count on it. I can't ever see Angel coming back and telling the truth in court. Well, Holden's down Hold there, it. and I think he can... Hold it. <laughs> Hold it. Forget it. I'm as good as convicted. Well, it's okay. I'll come in late then. Baba, honey. Good morning. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, darling. I'm not cherry yet. Oh, thank you for getting the tea. Well, is everything under control at the studio? Mm, yes, thank heavens. I don't have to rush in this morning. Thanks, dear. It amazes me how you keep that schedule. Tony is doing his best to find a replacement for Blythe Nelson. Oh, actually, I've kind of enjoyed doing both shows. Jeff and I talked about it the other day. I might keep up till, I don't know, summer sometime. Oh, listen, come on, Toots. It's time... If you get ready for school. Yeah, I'll give you a hand, Chris. Come on. Mother, I'd be happy to Hop drop along. Christopher off at preschool if you'd like. No, no, I'll drop him off on my way to the hospital. <laughs> we have a good time together. Well, it's obvious that he's crazy about you. Oh, I forgot, Sugar. I'll be right back. You okay? No. Honey, please. Don't put any more pressure on yourself. Look, I love you. How am I supposed to feel when I can't seem to make love to you? It's not gonna be easy. I am not gonna give up on us just because it's not quite the way it used to be. That just means we have to work a little harder to make it even better. Well, thank you for being so understanding and patient. I love you too, you know? Anybody home? Hi. Oh, hi. hi. My goodness. You all packed? Yeah, Rosie Tool's bul bulging already. It's a good thing Leanne doesn't have a lot of stuff. Uh, oh, man, I can't believe I came here from Seattle with just one suitcase. Uh, <laughs> what is, is this supposed to be? Oh, oh, this is uh, kitchen stuff that you lent me. Uh, not that I did a lot of cooking. Well, you know, I think you should just keep that and take it to New Jersey. I mean, I'm not going to be there to feed you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you always kind of spoiled me, didn't you? Hey, don't, you know, don't get me wrong. Not like I minded. It was nice. It's just, uh... I was like being part of a real family. Well, we consider you family, do. Yeah, I... I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> I, I know you're Annie's mom and all that. It, but you guys made this feel like home to me. Actually, I think this is the first real home I ever had. Not that, um... Not that Graham didn't really try. Uh, oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna miss you too, darling. <laughs> didn't think saying goodbye would be so hard. Okay, Chris is ready to go. Whoa, watch it, watch it. Well, his father's ready to go too. Duke, I'll see you at the hospital. Okay. I'll call you later. Okay, Father. John, Hi, Daddy. Bob, you can have any of this okay, stuff on so nickel. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> like you. Have a good day, Bye, Bye, Don't forget the dinner at Tony's tonight. Right. <laughs> Duke, it's a pity that you and Leanne can't postpone your trip back east. Oh, yeah, well, it's already some times. Pop, I, I better get going. Yeah. Yeah, I could get yeah. Carl gassed what? up and lubed. Oh, okay. Okay. You trip promise up. me that you and Leanne take, take care of each other. I promise you that, Mrs. Hughes. And you and Dr. Bob take care of each other. You know, it was nice to be here still when you came back home. You guys belong together. Whoa! See, Snyder, I told you, I don't need any... Morning, Tom. Morning. Morning. See, we're both here early. May I have a word with you? Oh, sure. Excuse me. Uh-huh. Hi, Kaylee. Just like in the movies, huh, Leanne? I'm really sorry that this is happening to you. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> you know, Kayla... A good prosecutor doesn't go for a conviction. He goes for the truth. So, just tell the truth. Caleb, I'll be right back. I told the guard you could wait. No, I don't. Wait where he is. Uh, it's all right, officer. It's all right. I know these people. Know. We're trying to keep us from coming out. Media circus. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Hi. How you doing, son? I've had better days. Caleb, we have good news. Yeah, if you mean about holding find an angel, I wouldn't count on her testifying. Well, I was with her, and Angel trusts Holden. 
That's a big mistake. Oh, now that attitude isn't gonna help us. Hey, you tell me what will. I'm just glad Julie's not here to see this. I keep imagining her in the courtroom. Uh, speaking of Julie, uh, I talked to Mrs. Wendell. Is Julie okay? Well, I couldn't really get a straight answer on that. You see, Julie never made it to Seattle, but uh, she did call Frank's mother last night to ask about the kids. Last night? So Mrs. Wendell doesn't know about all this, that's good. So I don't want Julie to find out. Hey, what's going on here? Um, Julie already knows. Emily told her. Was that why she didn't go to Seattle? She's not coming here, is she? Uh, no, I don't think so, son. She uh, told Frank's mama that uh, she thought she was the last person who could help you now. Not that she gives a damn. Thanks. Good morning. Oh, Lila. Well, can you believe how big little Casey has gotten in two weeks, huh? I've always said love is the best vitamin in the world. Well, he's getting plenty of that, that's for sure. <laughs> well, I'd better get on my way and get started. Lucinda canceled her house tour at the last minute. Oh. I'm getting the word out, so oh. if you'll excuse me. Good morning, Susan. How are you? You don't have to be nice to me. I see no reason not to be. If you're uncomfortable with what happened between you and Bob, that's between you and your conscience. But I'm not really blaming anyone. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, dear. Sabrina, I know you didn't like what I said to you yesterday. I don't want to hear any more about Tony O from you. I know all about his past, and that's exactly what it is, the past. The Tony o Reyes that I know in love would never deliberately hurt me. But I was glad to hear you speak your mind. It's always good to know where people stand. I'm not the only one who feels this way, Sabrina. He's hurt other women, too. If you're referring to Meg and Sierra, you should remember that they were both unfaithful to him. They went so far as to become pregnant by other men while they were living with him. If he treated them unkindly, I'm sure that he had good reason. Did you ever consider the fact that maybe they had good reason to turn elsewhere? I don't wish to discuss it any further. I'll be upstairs, Mother. Oh. I'm trying to talk to her about Tony O. Um. Well, she is determined to think only the best of him. I can only hope that his affections for her are sincere. Oh, I'm sure he's sincere about her money. You know, you'd think that after Colin she'd be a little more wary. But I guess some people never learn, do they? Hmm. I'm one to talk. I don't know where my husband is. My son won't talk to me. My God, if it weren't for the baby. Come on now. It will get better. Really? You think Caleb Snyder is innocent? I don't really know that much about the case. I, Margot thinks he is. She thinks he's not telling everything that he knows. Oh, I hope you're wrong. You and I both know what trouble that can be. Mm -hmm. He may have to learn that lesson the same way we did. The hard way. Oh, How's it going? Well, we've seated four jurors. I was just telling Leon it usually doesn't go quite this smoothly. Caleb will be out shortly. I assume that he and Jess will be spending a recess in the defense room. Can I have a word with you? Sure. Mm -hmm. Hey. Um, I was under the impression that the information I gave you about Caleb was going to help him. Jessica seems to think that you're going to use it against him. Is that true? Well, if Caleb is innocent, the truth is his best defense. Hey, look, I hear it's going pretty well. Look, I don't want to talk to Ellie, so you do us both a favor and get her out of here. Caleb, Caleb, Caleb why don't you... I go? said, let's go. Caleb, I'm going to talk to you. Caleb! Give us a minute. Now, you better get a grip on that anger of yours. That's your sister, for Pete's sake. She's not the enemy. If that's Ellie, I do not want to see her. Caleb, you pay me to give you advice, and I want you to take this. Don't turn against the people who love you and are trying to help you. Uh, there's a Mr. Anderson and a Miss Snyder. Send them in. I'll be right outside.
Caleb, I honestly thought that I was, that I was helping you. What do you want me to say, Ellie? You want me to say that I forgive you? That I won't hold it against you when I'm in prison? Oh, come on, Caleb. I told you that I did not want to see her. And you get her the hell out of here. Caleb, I love you. We have been there for each other ever since we were kids. We know each other better than anyone else, even Mama. You were the first person I went to when I had the miscarriage and my marriage was falling apart. You were the only one that knew about Brock in Chicago. And you were the one that came to me when you found out that Angel was pregnant and I never let you down. Not even when her brothers came over to my apartment and they beat me up. Are you finished? No, I'm not finished. No, I'm not finished with you. You're angry and you're hurt because of Julie and you're trying to blame Holden for that and you're trying to blame me for this. Now, you may never, ever forgive us, but you can't stop us for trying because I know. I know that you did not murder Henry Lang and I am going to do everything in my power to prove that you didn't, whether you're speaking to me or not. You didn't take my advice, did you? You know, Caleb, I did a lot of soul searching before I decided to risk my reputation by taking your case again. Now I believe you're innocent. But you're not making this easy to prove. You won't cooperate. You thumbed your nose at the court when you jumped bail. And your brother finds the one witness who might possibly help you. And you dismiss it with some smart-ass remark. Now, as far as I can see it, you are doing everything in your power to get yourself convicted. And if that's what you want, that's fine. Just leave me out of it. Jessica, you do not understand. No, Caleb, you don't think anybody understands. Poor Caleb. You think you're the only one who's ever suffered the way you're suffering. Well, you're not. And if you'd stop wallowing in self-pity for one second, maybe you could find it in your heart to show a little understanding and compassion and forgiveness. But if you can't do that for your sister or your brother or your wife, where do you get off thinking a jury of 12 strangers will be able to show understanding and compassion and forgiveness to you? It's not really angry with the world. And I'm afraid I didn't help matters any. I had to tell him that Julie knows about this whole thing and she is not coming back here to stand by him. Listen, if uh, he seems unforgiving, I think it's because deep down he blames himself for losing Julie and he just can't face it. Let's hope he doesn't lose a whole lot more with his rotten attitude. Hmm. Well, he doesn't have a whole lot of time to get an attitude adjustment. According to Tom, they may go to trial this afternoon. I'm for crying out loud, I tell Emma. Ellie, I'm sorry. Did you talk to Holden? Is he bringing Angel back here? I don't know. I don't know, and I'm starting to get a little worried. Uh, Emma, this is Cal. Listen, I'm afraid the trial may start a lot sooner than we expected. The DeWitt board is hyper-conservative, so their focus is going to be on the bottom line. But listen to me, give me... Trans-Asian. Matter of fact, I think the two of us should be able to handle just about everything around here. As I told you earlier, your secret is safe with me. Have you told Ellie? No. Have you told Daryl? I remember when he insisted that he knew you, and then suddenly he changed his mind and said it was all a mistake. How'd you buy his silence? He and his wife understood completely. I'm really not worried about it. Yeah, well, it's not just your worry anymore. It's also mine. And I'm not in the market for an ulcer, partner. Really saying goodbye. You and Leanne will be back here before you know it. We'll all be sitting down to breakfast just like old times. 
And I'll make those blueberry muffins you like so much. <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you, I'm going to miss those muffins. <laughs> I'm going to miss you. <laughs> oh, I wish I could take you guys with me. No, oh. you don't. <laughs> Come on, now. You're going to miss Leanne. You'll be late picking right. her up. Well, I guess this is it. See you. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> oh, Sabrina. Good luck with your dinner party. Thanks, Duke. I wish you and Leanne would be there. Thanks. Safe journey. How wonderful to be young and in love. <laughs> it's wonderful to be in love at any age, Grandmother. Oh. oh, I have so much to do before this evening. I don't know where to begin, but that's why I've popped in. I'll be at Tonio's if anyone needs to reach me. Okay, darling. And um, I'll see you both there later. All right. You have a good day, sweetie. What a change in her. Mm -hmm. I just wish that someone else were responsible for her. I had some hope that Chris would be home from school. Oh, you know, ordinarily he would be, but Joyce is picking him up after school, taking him to the zoo, and then on to her house for dinner. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> I saw Bob at the hospital. He, We didn't have a chance to talk. Yeah, he said he was going to have a very busy morning. Bob looks tired. Well, Mom, you know, I, he seems to think that he can come back home and just pick up right where we left off, and it just isn't working out that way. I mean, in spite of five happy years of marriage, you almost have to start all over again. And that's hard on Bob. It must be very hard for you, too. Particularly with Susan there at the hospital all the time. Well, you know, I've gotten to the point where I think that Susan's presence is more difficult and more confusing for Bob than it is for me at this point. Well, I don't mean to spring this on you, but it just happened. What about your obligation to Oakdale U? I spoke to them, and they said that they're willing to postpone the seminar until late spring, early summer. Oh, great, great. Well, I'll talk to whoever I have to. This is a great opportunity for you, isn't it? It's great in more ways than one. Yeah, I guess Thanks. So. <laughs> You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Oh, Hello. hi. Excuse me. Well, I suppose Duke has picked up Leanne by now, and they're... Well, look at it this way, John. You're not losing a son, but you're increasing the profits of the phone company. Huh? <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah, They're all leaving me, Bob. Andy may go to Hollywood, become a movie maker. Make a lot of money. Margo's <laughs> stuck here. Mm. Hi. Hi, Bob. Hi, Larry. Say, I forgot to ask you, what time do you want me to pick you up tonight? I don't know, 6.30? That'd be all right. Hey, by the way, do you and Mom want to ride with us? Good idea. And no one will get there early and have to make conversation with Tony without moral support. Yeah, really. yeah. Well, you just set a date and uh, I'll work everything out. Oh, good. Okay, fine. It might be a little difficulty pulling everybody together like this, you know, but I would really like to do that, get the family together for a nice dinner. That'd be nice. Well, that is nice, you know, yeah. doing things for the people that you love. It's a great antidote for loneliness. Believe me, I know. <laughs> Look, you can come over to the house any time that you want, okay? Can I take you up on that? Well, sure you can. Just hang in there, John, okay? Okay. <laughs> Have you asked John yet? Oh, yeah, I did. He was great. I think it's going to work out. Susan, are you sure this is what you want, or do you just want to leave because of the situation with Bob? Both. I know that he, uh, it was his decision to move back with Kim, but he really doesn't look very happy. Maybe I made it rather difficult for you and Kim to get back together. If that's so, I'm really very sorry. Listen, there's no reason to rehash all of that. Yeah. I, I, I'm very glad you guys worked it out and you're back together and everything seems to be going well. Congratulations. Thanks. Susan, I hope my mother wasn't rough on you. Oh, don't worry about that. You know, in the past six months, I've done a lot of things that uh, I regret. And at the top of that list is hurting you. No, I think my priorities are, huh? So the jury selection is going pretty well, huh? Yeah, neither Jess nor I are playing games. We're looking for 12 impartial people, but having prejudged this case, three more to go. Yeah, well, however it turns out, I know that you'll make sure that justice is served. Oh, spoken like a good lawyer. 
you're going to be a good lawyer. To me, of course, you're always going to be my little girl. Oh, well, just you wait until we have to go up against each other. Interesting thought. It could happen. Yeah. There's no question about it. <laughs> no. Hey, sorry. The gas station kept me waiting. But listen, if we hurry up, we can still get to uh, Fashions, Campus, uh, Memorial. I'm trusting you with my only daughter, you know. I appreciate that, sir. Don't wait till you get to New Jersey to call. Call Collette. I love you. Keep going. I don't want you to have to drive like a maniac to make up for lost time. Okay. I love you, too. Oh, I miss you. Tom, Judge Rockwell is ready to continue. Okay. I but you're carrying on the family tradition. <laughs> We're all proud of you, Leanne. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. Here, take this. Nice right. Hey, come on, Pop. You already wrote me that check. It's for the trip, so you'll eat well. Don't eat all that junk food. I know. Damn. It's oh, saying goodbye. Really? Jersey's not the end of the world. Pam and Annette are there, and I'm only a telephone call away. You know that. Huh? Oh, good. You didn't leave yet. Oh, 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 you didn't think we'd let you go without a royal send-off, did you? Oh. Here's a little something. Now, just open it later. Oh, oh. thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're all so important to me. Oh, darling, you're important to us, too. It's hard to believe there was a time when you weren't a part of our lives. And look what you've done. Look what you've accomplished since you've been here. Hmm? Yeah, well, I had a long way to go. <laughs> I remember when I first came here, I was so scared. And you just all opened your arms and, and gave me so much love and support. Thank you. I think we better get going before everyone starts bawling, huh? <laughs> oh, I forgot to say goodbye to Margo. Oh, oh, I she, she called. She'll meet you in the parking lot. She's on her way. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, and let's see. We caught Andy and Courtney between classes. Uh, Lisa at Fashions, and there's just one person I need to say goodbye to, and there she is. <laughs> hey, couldn't leave without thanking you. For what? For everything. For your friendship, and, and advice. Yeah. Kicking butt, you know, if it weren't for you, I'd be living in Seattle right now. My whole life would be turning out a whole lot different. I... I owe you. <laughs> I'm really gonna miss you. Lab's not gonna seem like the same. You know, I wish you were teaching that course at Rutgers instead of Hopedale U. It's been postponed anyway. Why was that? Hey, are you gonna stand here asking questions, or are you gonna get on with the rest of your life? And you better be a terrific doctor, and you better stay in touch, or... I promise. Okay. You take care of yourself. I will. Bye. Okay, Leanne, uh, this is it. Oh, okay. Bye. Oh, well, bye, sweetie. Bye. Take care. Bye, bye. bye Duke. Uh, I'll miss you, guys. We'll see you, mm -hmm. we'll see you Oh, I'll call you now. Bye-bye. Okay. 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 Well, I know that when Holden gets back, he's gonna be in that courtroom. Doesn't matter what Caleb feels. Mm -hmm. What's this? A subpoena to appear as a prosecution witness in the case of the state of Illinois versus Caleb Snyder. I haven't. Actually, I wanted to see Caleb. Is that all right? Sure. Um, he was just having lunch. Come on in. Thanks. Hi, Caleb. Do you want me to leave you two alone? No, I think you'd better hear what I just said. <laughs> remember being in this room, waiting for my trial to start. And I know that this is no place for chit-chat, so I'll just get right down to it. Caleb, there are people who think that you're withholding information. Now, maybe you don't think that this information is relevant to your trial, or maybe you're trying to protect someone. It doesn't really matter. But if it's true, you're making a very dangerous mistake. I was tried and convicted for a murder that I didn't commit because I wasn't completely honest with Jessica. Now, she's a damn good attorney, but I... I tied her hand. I loved and was trying to protect. Well, they suffered right along with me. Don't be a martyr. In the long run, everybody ends up getting hurt. And I just wish someone had come along to tell me all these things a long time ago. That's really all I wanted to say. 
Thank you, Barbara. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. Good luck, Kenneth. In case you're wondering, I didn't ask Barbara to come by. But I'm glad she did, and I'd like to add to what she said. She told you she spent time in prison, but she only hinted at what it cost her. It's probably very difficult for her to talk about. But let me tell you something, Caleb. If you think the world looks bleak now, it's a whole lot bleaker from behind bars. Jessica, what if the truth just makes the case look worse for me? Caleb, let me handle the defense. Just give me the facts. Because you got her pregnant and you arranged for an abortion and there was an infection and she had to have a hysterectomy but uh, that's all going to come out when Jay and Stephen Lang well, take no, the that's stand. not the truth you didn't arrange the abortion no I did God knows I did and I'm going to spend the rest of my life feeling guilty about that but it wasn't my child Jessica it was Angel's father who got her pregnant. And that's why I went to Henry Sweet that afternoon. How's your father's mood the last time you spoke with him on the phone? Optimistic. He was looking forward to having my brother take over the European operation, and um, he was full of plans for expanding the business. So he hardly sounded like a man who was about to commit suicide? Objection! I withdraw the question, Your Honor. I have no further questions. I do reserve the right to recall the witness at a later time. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Mm. Mr. Hughes. Mm. Your Honor, due to the very sensitive nature of my cross-examination, I request that the courtroom be closed to all spectators except close family members of the defendant who are already familiar with the material. Mr. Hughes? I have no objection to that. I do request that uh, close family members of the victim, namely Mr. Lang's sons, Jay and... Stephen, be allowed to remain in the courtroom as long as it's closed. I have no objection to that. This relates to what we talked about in chambers? Yes, Your Honor. Due to the personal nature of the upcoming testimony, the courtroom will be cleared of all representatives of the media and all spectators not directly related to the defendant or to the victim in this case. Bailiff will clear the court as soon as possible so that we can proceed. What did Bob say when he left the office? Um, not very much. Uh, something, uh, he had to do something, and he took off in a hurry. He was very worried about it, though. Margo, hi, I it's Kim. Listen, uh, I'm at Bob's office. I understand you just talked to him? Yeah, Duncan called here just after you left. He claims he has proof that links Tonio to Stenbeck. Oh, Lord. Sabrina. Yeah, I thought you and Bob would want to know right away so that you can talk to her and prepare her, so I called. Well, Susan's here. She says that Bob left the office right after he spoke to you, so I assume he's on his way to try to find Sabrina. But what about Tonio? Have you arrested him? Well, no, Kim. We can't act on this until we see what proof Duncan has, and he's on his way back from Scotland now. But, you know, don't worry about Tonio. You should find Sabrina. She's going to need your support. The thing is, Sabrina left a message for me at the studio saying that she and Tonio had canceled their dinner party tonight. I know, Tonio has some kind of a personal emergency and has to leave town, and Sabrina's going to go along with him. Do you suppose Tonio knows that he's in trouble, and, and that's what this is all about? I, I don't know. I don't know, Kim. Um, I will call Tonio's office and see if I can find out anything about this personal emergency, but what you and Bob should do is find Sabrina and stay with her.
Well, I just filed the uh, flight report, so we're ready to take off. Something must have happened to delay Mr. Reyes. There's well, no hurry. I'm sure he'll be here any moment. Yeah, well, there's no hurry. Like I said, you know, it's pretty windy out there, so it might be better if we waited a while. Well, I'll be up front uh, monitoring the weather reports. All right, I'll let you know as soon as he's here. Sabrina? Antonio, I was beginning to worry. I was about to ring the penthouse. I'm sorry, I had a lot more to take care of than I realized. Mm. Uh, if the pilot's ready, I'd like to take off right away. So I thought it'd be better if we waited a no, while. No, no, we have to take off right away. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, I have a friend who's uh, in a hospital in Cartagena. He's in critical condition. Well, all right, sir. If you fasten your seat belts, I'll check for clearance. I know you're worried about Ramon. Yes, he's like a brother to me. I'm just afraid we'll be too late. Well, try not to imagine the worst, my darling. You're right. You're right. Thank you for taking care of everything. Oh, I was happy to be able to do it. Were you able to uh, reach your family after you phoned me? No, no. But as I told you, I, I left messages with Mother, Father, and Franny, and I also left a note at the house. Oh. Did you tell them we were going to Montega? No. I, I just told them that you had a personal emergency to take care of, and I was going with you so we'd have to postpone the party till we got back. Well, you've taken care of everything. Thank you. I'm sure they'll begin to wa worry about me soon, though. I'll try to film Mother now. I'm sure she's back. Oh, you'd better wait until we're airborne, Sabrina. All right, of course. Won't be long now. There's no answer to Tonio's apartment. I'm gonna try home. Kim, is something wrong? I'm afraid there's something terribly wrong. Is there anything I... Hey, John, listen, um, I'll talk to you before I leave, but I wanted to thank you for clearing the decks. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, all right. You better talk to Kim. I think she got some bad news. Kim? I can't talk, John. I've got to get home. What's the matter? I can't find Bob. I think something has happened to Sabrina. Maybe she's left a note at the well, house. Well, come along. You can explain in the car. father was referring to when he wrote that your brother Barkley and your sister Angel might come to you with wild stories about him? No. But my sister Angel has had emotional problems for a long time since my mother died. And um, unfortunately, Barkley has had a long-standing drinking problem that uh, sometimes affects his perception of reality. But do you have any idea what your father meant specifically? when he cautioned you about these wild stories they might tell you about him? No. All right. Mr. Lang, would you describe your father's relationship with your sister, Angel? He loved her very much. Um, she was his youngest and his only daughter. He gave her a great education, trips to Europe, uh, pretty much everything she wanted. Uh, he also left the bulk of his estate to her. Only the business itself went to my brother and myself. So would you characterize your father's relationship with your sister as extremely close? It was the sort of relationship that every father would hope to have with his daughter. So you're telling the court you have no idea at all what kinds of stories your father feared your sister might tell you about. Objection. I think the witness has answered this question. Sustain. All right, Mr. Lang, did your brother Barkley ever come to you with stories that might be termed as wild about your father? 
Not that I recall. Then let me refresh your memory. Didn't you get into a fight, a physical fight, with your brother Barclay shortly after your father's death? Mr. Lang, I'm prepared to call a police officer who can testify to this. Yes. My brother Stephen and I had a quarrel with Barclay. Um, we all lost our temper. What was the fight about? As I just said, we were very upset about my father's death. Emotions were running high. Isn't it true, Mr. Lang, that you and your brother Stephen attacked your brother Barclay because he told you that there was something unnatural about your father's relationship with your sister Angel? I don't understand the question. Then let me be more specific. Did your brother Barclay tell you that your father was having an incestuous relationship with your sister? I'm sorry, miss, but the courtroom's closed. But I have to talk to the defense attorney. Miss Griffin, she's expecting word about an important witness. I'm sorry, I can't admit you, but if you'd like to write a note, I'll see that she gets it. Maybe Joyce took Chris for a walk or something. Uh, yeah, actually, you're right. I think that. Hi. Hi. Uh, Mom's not home yet. Okay. You looking forward to dinner? <laughs> actually, Andy, <laughs> brace yourself because I know you're going to be really disappointed about this, but it's called off. You're kidding. No. Why? I don't know. Sabrina called at the center when I was with the patient. She left a message that said it was going to be postponed. So I don't know what that means. That's great, I think, because I mean they must have gotten a fight or something. I mean, maybe, maybe she's maybe she's finally seeing through this guy. Well, you know what? If she has, I think we should have a party and celebrate anyway. You know I'm what I mean? straight. Hey, by the way, did you get a chance to see Sean? Yeah, I did. Hey, hey Mom. Your father of Sabrina here. Well, no. No. Why? What's wrong? Well, I'm not sure, but Margot called your father's office a little while ago. She said that Duncan has proof that Tonio was definitely involved with James Stenbeck. Your father ran out of the office, and I assume that he is trying to find Sabrina. Um, I'll check her room. I haven't seen her. Did you guys talk to Sabrina at all today? No. She left a message at, at Franny's work saying that the party was called off. Yeah, I know. She, I got the same message, but I don't understand. Why hasn't Bob called me? Well, you know, if uh, Bob has explained to Sabrina the truth about Tony, I'm sure he's got his hands full dealing with her. Why don't I call Margo and see if she's heard anything more? Mom? There are lots of things missing from Sabrina's room, including her suitcase. I can't tell you how relieved I was to see you walk through that door. Sorry that I didn't call you, but after I hung up the phone with you, I haven't called me from her room. She just got out of the shower and found out that Angel was gone. What happened? She panicked. She went back to the convent. When she got there, one of the sisters told her that her brother Jay was looking for her. So luckily, she came back to the hotel. We figured that Jay would be looking for us, so we left that hotel and went to another one down near the airport. Mm. I would have called, but she was in such a terrible state, and... Why is the courtroom closed? Well, I'm not sure exactly, but I do know that Jess was hoping to have it cleared if there was any testimony about Henry's abuse. Oh, let Angel hear you say that. She's still right on the edge. Just, see, I know my brothers are in there right now. I, I, I know it's all going to come out. Now, listen I, to me. Please, now, listen, me... Jay is probably still in North Carolina, and your brothers are in there. There's nothing to be afraid of, Angel. I have to... Uh, Holden, I, I think we should take her back to the farm. I need to stay here and talk to Jess after court recess. Holden, please, I just can't stay here any longer. I know what they're talking about me right now. They're talking about Daddy and me right now. Uh, Holden, I'll talk to Jess. I think maybe you better take Angel back yeah. to the farm. All right. All right, maybe that's best. I'll, I'll call you if, if I hear anything, all right? All right. Okay. okay. Just come out to the farm when you're ready, okay? Okay. Hello, Lily. Hi. I thought you were... 
were in Atlanta. Yeah, I just got back. Nancy picked me up at the Hi. airport. Hello, dear. How's the trial going? Oh, well, I just got here, so I'm not really sure. But they've closed the court. They've cleared it of all spectators. Well, that's strange. Why would they do that? And what position did Caleb Snyder hold at Lang Furniture? He was one of the foremen in our factory in Chicago. Will you tell the jury why your father fired him? Yes. Because he found out what kind of a scum he Objection. really was. Objection. Sustained. Mr. Lang, would you please refrain from these comments? Just answer the questions put to you. Please, will you tell the jury why your father fired Caleb Snyder? Because Snyder seduced my sister. She was a young and innocent girl. He didn't love her, but he knew that our family was wealthy. Objection. So when he got her pregnant, he took Mr. her to Lang, an abortionist to get an abortion. Okay. And, and when that, what that quack did to her, she was Mr. never Lang. able to have children anymore. And when my father found out, yeah, he Mr. fired him and told him never to come near Angel again. And it's taken all this time for that damn coward to get even with him. If you do not, I'll have you evicted from my... I never thought I'd see this place again. You've taken your first big step. Coming home. It's not a step in the way you think, Holden. It's... It's not, because I can't do what you want me to do. I can't walk into a, Angel, look, a room look, full of look, strangers and tell I'm, them... You're just tired now, and I'm sure you're going to feel differently when you've had time to think about this. That's all I've been thinking about, Iva. All of those people in that room, staring at me when they know the truth. Now, I, I know how hard this is for you, but Caleb is facing very serious charges, and Jay and Stephen have threatened Barkley into silence. It is your testimony that's going to help Well, save where, where Caleb. is Barkley? I need Angel? to talk to him. Is he all right? Have you talked to him? Should I call the Lakeview? Yes. Maybe he's there. You want some water? Something to drink? Yes, thank you. My mouth is so dry. Okay. Hi, I'm looking for uh, Barkley Lang. Could you connect me with his room, please? No answer. Well, maybe... Maybe he took all that money that he put away from me and he went somewhere where no one will ever find him. That's impossible, Angel, because that money was returned. He may still be tried for embezzlement, and he still may go to prison, just like Caleb may go to prison for your father's murder, unless you can find the strength to tell the truth and clear them both. I'm real sorry I would have been here sooner, but I had to get Mom to come over to the house to watch the kids. Mavis says that Bob has not returned to the hospital. Why hasn't he called me? Margot, what kind of evidence does Duncan have that, that Tony O was involved with Stenbeck? It's documents proving that Tonio was indeed working with Stenbeck before he died and that his client in Toronto, Richard Tyrell, was also involved. You know, Duncan was, was sure from the get-go that Tyrell and Tonio were somehow behind Colin Crowley's death and Blake Stevens' disappearance. Oh, my God, that means that Sabrina could be with the man who had well, her ex-husband murdered? Oh, uh, yeah, just a minute, Margo. Detective Higgins. Thanks. Joel. When? Okay, well, you get back to me as soon as you hear anything more. Well, I guess proof is out that uh, Duncan was right. Richard Tyrell has committed suicide. Now, they tried Tonio's penthouse, but there was no answer, so I'm going over there right now. Oh. Not alone, you're not. Wait a minute. I'm going to go with you, well, too. Well, I'll stay by the phone in case Dad or Sabrina calls. All right, huh? stay with Sabrina. Sure. I can't believe this. I tried so hard to warn Sabrina about Tonio. Franny, we all did. For a long time. I'll get that. <clears throat> you know, maybe Bob got Sabrina before Tonio did. I hope so, Andy. I really hope so. Alice, it's so good to see you. Oh. What is it? Sabrina, I think it's safe to undo your seatbelt now. We seem to be above the turbulence. <laughs> I'm glad. My heart was in my throat during takeoff, especially that point when the plane dropped. I'm sorry you were frightened. Perhaps we should have waited. No. No, I know how anxious you are to be with your friend. Thank you. Would you like to try and get your family yes, now? Yes, I should. 
There's no dial tone. Really? Hmm. Doesn't seem to be working. I don't know what's wrong. Oh, they'll begin to worry if they don't hear something from me soon. Well, uh, we'll find a phone as soon as we land in Cartagena, and you can call then. All right. Thank you so much for coming with me, being with me during this time. It's not a very happy trip for me, but at least it's a little better having you here with me. to get me fired. John? Call an ambulance, Marco. Do me a favor. Go try to find me cloths, towels, anything that can stop the bleeding. The ambulance is on its way. Tell them to alert a Dr. Michael Ripley. I want him to meet us in OR the minute we get there. Well, I'm out of here. I'm gonna go home and pack, go to California and see my darling daughter. You better hurry while things are still quiet in the yard. I'm hurrying. Emergency? What? Dr. Hughes has been shot. Dr. Dixon has requested that you locate a Dr. Michael Ripley immediately, have him report to surgery. Ah, thank you. Oh, is he? The bullet seems to have passed right straight through him. I don't know how he is. We won't know until we get him to OR. I can see how concerned you are. I wish there was something I could do. You know, I had hoped that on our first trip together to Montega, you would be wearing this ring on your finger and we would be making wedding plans. Well, I'm sorry it's not a happier occasion, but I'm still looking forward to seeing the country where you were raised. I've studied Raphael Esquilon sketches so often that I'm sure I'll recognize your family's plantation the minute we're there. I'm not sure that I will recognize it. So much of it has been reclaimed by the jungle. Well, I still want to see it. I want to know everything about you. Will you take me there when, when Ramon is recovered? If he recovers, I will take you there. I promise. It's going to take before they adjourn, Holden, but I'm going to stay here until Jess comes out. No. Remember the fight that you had with Barkley, but neither of you can recall what it was about. Is that correct? Well, as my brother explained, we were under a lot of stress because of my father's death, and Barkley's always been difficult to get along with because of his drinking. So Barkley did not come to you with any of the wild stories your father was referring to? No. I don't recall anything like that. Stephen... I'm going to ask you the same question I asked your brother, and may I remind you that you are under oath. Did Barclay accuse your father of having had an incestuous relationship with your sister? As Jay already said, that, that was just a vicious lie that Caleb Snyder made up after he murdered my father so Mr. that he could Lang. gain sympathy for Mr. all... Mr. Lang, please just answer the question. No. Barkley never accused my father of any such thing. I have no further questions for this witness. Witness is excused. It's been a long session. We'll adjourn now and reconvene tomorrow at 12 noon. Greg, would you call Lily at M&A and see if she's heard from Holden? Be right back. Thanks. Wait a minute. Aren't you going to say anything to your brother? No, Cal, I don't think I should. He's still mad at me for telling Tom Hughes about Henry and Angel. Well, that was all going to come out anyway. I know. Caleb's got to realize that. He's also going to realize that you were only trying to help him. Caleb, hey, is there anything you need? No, Mama, I'll be okay. Okay. Guess you get a good novel out of this one, huh, sir? Yeah. Let's hope this one has a happy ending, huh? Well, we're all behind you, Caleb. Hang in there. Okay, baby. Thanks, Cal. Okay, Mama. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Nice. 
Well, Tom, you sure earned your paycheck today. Now, there's still time for us to get over to Tonio's for that big celebration. Uh, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna make it, Mac. I'm gonna go home and spend some time with Margo and the kids, see if we can do something to restore my faith in human nature, and uh -huh. Tonio's not gonna do that for me. Thank you. Jessica! They found Angel, Holden and Iva found Angel. Oh. She was here, but she left. Uh, she's at the farm. She's pretty rocky. Well, I'll, I'm gonna come out to the farm tonight and talk to her about testify. Jess, I don't think she's ever gonna agree to that. Well, she's gonna have to, Lily, unless she wants Caleb to spend the rest of his life in prison. Tom? Yeah? The guard asked me to give you this. Said the call came in right before the adjournment. That's right. Oh, my God. What is it? It's my dad. Mm -hmm. Oh. Right straight through to OR. Dr. Dixon, Dr. Ripley's scrubbing for surgery. Good, good, good. Now, I'll be out as soon as I can. All right. Oh, God, I wish I could go with him. Well, he's going to be okay. I'm so glad John was with us. What would have happened if he hadn't been? Kim. Oh, Mom. They just took him into surgery. He's oh. still unconscious. John says his vital signs are good. Dr. Ripley's going to operate. What happened? Well, Bob apparently tried to stop Tonio from leaving with Sabrina. Tonio shot him. The shot entered through the back and exited through the abdomen. And John says they won't know how serious it is until they go into surgery. Margo, what about Sabrina? If she were there when it happened, then Tonio could have forced her to go with him. Yeah, well, I've alerted the station. They're looking for both of them. And Joel Higgins will call me if they know anything. Let's all just... Okay. Being prepped for surgery, Dr. Ripley will find out what the damages are and then we'll know what steps have to be taken. All right, are you, are you going to be there with Yes, me? I will, but believe me, Ripley is the best man for this job. I don't care, I don't care. I just will feel better if I you will, I will. I'll scrub, I'll be there, okay? All right. Just hang there. All right. All right. All right. I heard they just brought Bob in. How's he doing? He's being prepped right now. I can't speak anymore. Hey, don't be. Room service here is not exactly great. Yeah. Oh, I should probably get used to it after the way things went today. Yeah, I don't want to hear you talking like that. No, Seth, face it. The jury's convinced that I'm guilty as hell. Jay and Stephen have Barkley locked up somewhere, and Angel, she, she's never going to testify. Well, I don't know about that. That's what I came here to talk to you about. Holden and I have brought her up from that convent. She's out at the farm right now. Is she okay? Uh, well, apparently she's very frightened. Meaning that she's never going to testify, right? Well, I don't think so right now. Holden and I are hoping she's going to realize that she has to. Jessica, she's going to talk to her tonight. She's never going to be able to do well, it, Seth. Well, if she doesn't, you're going to have to take the stand yourself. No! You have to. You have to tell the truth, and all of it, Caleb, including whatever it is you're holding back. You are on trial for murder, boy. And they are going to convict you if you don't help yourself. Did your brother Barkley ever accuse your father of having had an incestuous relationship with your sister? What the hell are you doing back here? Did you get my note? <laughs> yeah, when I got back from seeing Barkley. <laughs> Didn't you get enough of this place today? I needed some time to think and uh, seemed like the perfect place to do it. What did you need to think about? About what Snyder's lawyer asked us on the stand? What Barkley tried to tell us? What Caleb tried to say that What's night that we beat him? <sighs> Don't tell me you're starting to believe that stuff about Dad. Stephen, it never happened. Don't you see what the Snyders are trying to do? They want to make Dad out to be some kind of a monster so that the jury will sympathize with Caleb. Don't you see that? Dad and Angel were fine. Nothing was going on. Dad loved her. Well, I know that, but... Jay, we perjured ourselves on the stand. Listen. We've got to find Angel. We've got to see to it that she gets the help she needs. 
I mean the operation Dad was talking about. We've got to make sure the Snyders don't brainwash her into believing something that never happened. Holden, she really should. Do I? I have your bed all made up fresh. I thought you might like to lie down a little bit. Yes, Emma, start. thank you. I really would like that. Come. Um, I... Thank you all for being so kind to me. Well, you're very easy to be kind to, Angel. Go up and get a nap. <laughs> Angel, I'm very glad that you're back and you're safe. Come on, let's go. I'll go up with you. When I and I brought her back here, I thought for sure she had made up her mind to testify. We, we never should have taken her to that courtroom when she heard that, that the abuse testimony came out, Henry's abuse testimony. I mean, she just fell apart. She couldn't take it, Olden. <sighs> Hi, Jessica. Hi, Ellie. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Everyone, where's Angel? She's upstairs. She's had a very rough day. Thank you. Yes, well... If she had had the strength to press charges against her father when you first came to me, maybe we could have avoided all of this. Well, sometimes that's easier said than done. I know. She knows that you know about Henry's abuse. Good. That's a start. I guess I'll go up and get her. Okay. Would you like to sit down? Thank Ellie? you. Come and sit down, Jessica. Yes. All right, so honestly, how do you think it went today? Well, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Unless we can prove that the incest actually happened, it just looks like a defense tactic to discredit the victim. How can you call Henry Lang a victim? Well, Cal, at this point, that's how the jury sees him. Angel, this is Jessica Griffin. She's a very close friend of the family. Hello, Angel. I remember meeting you at the AIDS benefit last summer. Oh, yes. They told me that you're Caleb's lawyer. Yes, I am. And I'm his friend. And I'd like to talk to you about his trial. Why don't we all go into the parlor, okay? I'll give you some time to lie. Why don't we get this out of the way? I know you're aware that Holden has told me about the situation with your father, and I want you to know that I haven't told anyone else. Thank you. And please, please don't, don't tell anyone else ever. I mean, I know you all think that I am the only one who can prove that Caleb is innocent, but I can't believe that's true. Your brothers, Stephen and Jay, both denied under oath any knowledge of your father's abuse. What about Barclay? We don't know where Barclay is. Stephen and Jay had him hospitalized somewhere. What? For his drinking problem. Oh, no, when? What? What? Angel, if you won't testify on Caleb's, Caleb's behalf, would you at least go to your brothers and find out where Barclay is? No. No, you... I, I can't. Go to see Stephen and Jay. They would ask me all kinds of questions about Daddy. I... Well, maybe it's time you told them the truth. You don't understand. See, they won't believe me. And they'll have me put away somewhere, too. It, it won't... I'm still your husband. I would never let them do that to you. Holden, I'm sorry. I am really sorry, but I can't go to see Stephen and Jay. I can't face them. Please don't ask me to do that. Angel, listen to me. Without your testimony, Caleb's chances of acquittal are very poor. And without Barclays, they're even worse. As it stands right now, Caleb could very well be convicted of murdering your father. Holden, um, would you leave us alone for a minute? Sure. If it's okay with Angel. Wait, why? Why do you... It's all right. It's okay. Okay. I'll Thank be you. in the parlor if you need me. Thanks.
Caleb told me about the abortion. What did he tell you? He told me that it was not his child you were carrying. It was your father's. He also told me that Barkley is the only other person that knows. Angel, I'm afraid that testimony may be the only thing that could convince a jury your father was experiencing the kind of guilt and fear of exposure that could drive him to take his life. And honey, you are the only one who can name him as the father of your child. Well, she's out of the house with you today. No news. No news. He's still in surgery. I'm going to try to reach David again. Oh, Ellen, you must be exhausted from your trip. Honey, why don't you go home and call from there? Uh, we'll let you know the minute there's any news. There may be something I can do. Oh, but the whole family's here. I'm going to be just fine, really. Please, get some rest. Well, maybe I will for a while. Hey, Ellen, uh, Courtney can drive you home. Yeah, oh, I, would, I would love to. Thank you, darling. I'll, I'll walk you out. Thanks, great. Okay, Duncan called from O'Hare. He is through customs. He'll be in Oakdale shortly. I hope, hope this proof is as sure as he claims so Tonio never sees the light of day. Um, yeah. Kim, why don't you sit down? Oh, no, Mom, thanks. I just am... I think I'm going to go take a walk. Would you like me to come with you? Thanks, Noah. I just need some time alone. I really did all this. I just wish we knew what happened to Sabrina. I wonder where we are now. I don't know. At least it's been a smooth flight. Sabrina, thank you again for coming with me. I want to be a part of everything you do. That's all part of loving someone. Well, folks, we're on an automatic pilot. I don't expect anything but clear skies between here and Cartagena. Um, I just want to remind you that the bar is stocked and there's plenty of food if you get hungry. Thank you. Sure. There is one problem. Yeah. The phone doesn't seem to be working. Really? It's funny, I've never had any problems with it before. Oh, no problem. You must have accidentally turned the lock on. Oh. If you uh, want to call home, I suggest you do it shortly, because we just flew out over the Gulf of Mexico, and in about 30 minutes, you won't be able to use this phone. Thank you. Well, why don't we see what we have here to eat? All right, I just want to phone home while I have a chance. been very good at this. I haven't been here in a long time. They tell us in AA that we have to trust to a higher power. So. Please don't let him die. He's the kindest, most decent man I've ever known. He's made me see that there's more good in the world than I would have ever imagined. I've caused him a lot of grief and a lot of trouble. He's never turned his back on me or blamed me. I love him so much. But I know that he can never be part of my life the way I would like him to be. So please, don't take him away from his family. Don't take him away from all the people who love him. Who need him. Swiss, Vermont Cheddar, Munster, Avati. From the makers of 